Okay, so we have time still for some questions. Uh, please ask questions. Um, I, I have a question. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, so far we've only identified, I think you said, 1.8 million species, but you said that it was believed there were 50 million species, and for that difference, which is rather large, uh, there were no um, collection, uh, no primary data events at all. Mm -hmm. So why do we think there are 50 million species if we've only identified 1.8 million species so far? <laughs> well. That's basically, it's, uh, well, the, the numbers uh, vary a lot between uh, different sources. So it's actually, if you can find it on different uh, publications, it goes from 2 million to 100 million, actually. So it's all about estimation. So what you, what you can do is to, so, is to try to uh, model actual the number of species. So you, don't, you, cannot, you can model not only where the species are, but also how many species you're going to find. So if you go to a place and you start like uh, trying to figure out species for how many species there are of this particular group, and you've only checked on this area, it's very likely that you might gonna be finding more. So you, you have, it's, I think it's right now, it's around something like between five and 10,000 new species found every year. And that's uh, without really going deep into, into most of the groups. It's, uh, as I said, I mean, birds, they are very well studied. And uh, you get uh, mammals is very, well, I think one, there was one found this year or last year. That's very rare to find a new mammal. But it's, uh, if you think on insects, insects is still, we know very, very little. So and the entomologists, they really know that this, this is going to be a lot more than they actually know. But there's just not people, enough people uh, studying them. So. If, if we only discover 5,000 a year and there are 50 million of them, uh, <laughs> That's not a that's very a good thousand, scenario. That's a thousand years. Right. That's actually uh, related to the idea of uh, it's what is uh, now considered the sixth extinct, uh, extinction. So there's been several extinctions over the, the, the history of the planets, like the dinosaurs, well, there been, like, where biodiversity really actually went down. So they, they track the, where um, they can estimate how many species there were at a certain time, and then it goes down suddenly for whatever reason. And right now, there is an, it's happening what they call the sixth extinction, and it's uh, very related to climate change and, and human impact. Actually, if you ask, I mean, climate change is being huge, but it's the biggest threat, I, from my point of view, is actually the land use. So the destruction of ecosystems is, is just going so, so quickly that it's not giving enough space for species to continue living. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I like the presentation. It was really good. Um, I had a question on your bio, if you will. Uh, are you a biologist with an IT background and picked up geospatial skills to understand all this information? If you could throw some light on, uh, especially yeah. the geospatial part, did you have to go outside your realm of comfort to figure things out? Right, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, I started from scratch. I, well, I studied some GIS on, on university as part of our agriculture studies. But it's, uh, no, I, I went straight to biology later to study, and, and then we really started needing some computer science because it was not, uh, I mean, you cannot do much now without computers. So I started getting involved in this, and, and at some point in our projects, we were, actually I joined this community, I, joined, I started inter getting interested in GIS because of OGC. So at, at this time I was only working with, uh, with the standards, so I'm, I'm a co-author of some of the standards that we've been talking about, about how to share biodiversity data. And there was this need about how to share it with bigger initiatives that were using OGC as their, as their framework. So that's when I started getting into it, and, and yeah, and maps are just something that you start and you cannot stop with them. So. Any other questions? Over there? Yeah, what are your thoughts on uh, public science? Uh, we're working with some groups in the Bay Area that uh, use the normal public to do observations uh, outside and, and then put it into uh, forums on a website and then it all gets together. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear much about it. Right. Actually, there is, there is uh, several projects like this that are actually uh, providing data within this, uh, this network. Especially in the United Kingdom, I think there's a big uh, network of, 
of, uh, of people observating birds and things like that. So, so yeah, it, it is part. But it's, uh, now I think it's still under discussion is we, we're working on metadata models on how, how to assure somehow the confidence on the data. So that's, a, that's an important issue. But it's, uh, yeah, but it's definitely, and I think without this kind of initiatives, it's going to be impossible. Uh, I mean, s seriously, with the, with, the, with the speed that researchers are, are studying biodiversity, it's not enough. We're not getting enough, na enough data. So if someone invents an incredible new sensor that can detect the specimens from the, from the space, or we're going to need a lot of people looking at nature. So that's definitely think it's, it's going to be more and more that we get into projects like this. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, then uh, please give uh, Javier a, a warm welcome.